Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a tutorial on a full coverage foundation routine, but I wanted to make sure that uh, even though that this is, you know, full coverage, I wanted to make sure that it does not feel like a lot of product and I wanted to make sure it looks as skin-like as it possibly can. Now, obviously, when we're doing a full coverage foundation look, you will be able to tell that it's makeup, but I still didn't want it to look too powdery. I didn't want the complexion to look dull. I just wanted it to look as healthy and realistic as possible while still being full coverage and still giving you the, you know, products and tips and tools and techniques to hide what you wanted to hide on your face. So I really hope that you guys find this tutorial helpful. Uh, before we get into it, I would love if you guys would subscribe and I would also love it if you guys would come follow me on Instagram as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's get into this full coverage foundation routine. First thing you're gonna do, cleanse your skin, tone, put on your sunscreen, put on your moisturizer. Let that sink in for a few moments. I've already done all of that and now my skin is just, it doesn't feel quite as um, fresh as if I had just applied moisturizer, which is what I would typically like to do. So to just kind of re-moisten my base, I'm gonna spray some of this Caudalie on and just give that a moment to set. Um, this is the Beauty Elixir. I think primer is actually also very important because you want to be using a primer that's going to actually grip your makeup and not a primer that's just going to, you know, sit on top of your skin and have everything feeling really heavy and full because you're going to be wearing full coverage foundation. So you don't want to feel like you have a ton of product on your face. So I'm going to be using one of my personal favorites. It's the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This actually makes your makeup last longer. It leaves you with a really nice sticky base so that your makeup has something to you know attach to and, and take the time to really you know push the primer gently under your eyes so that you don't have concealer settling into fine lines or anything and then once this primer starts setting down you guys will see it gives you this really nice sticky tacky base that is just perfect for putting makeup on top of. Illuminator is also an amazing tool for giving your skin, you know, radiance, luminosity, just looking very alive and truly healthy. So one of the problems with Illuminator is if you are like me and you like to apply it all over your entire face, that can be a problem when you have texture or blemishes or just things that are 3D in a sense, you know, like a, a dry patch that's sticking out or a pimple. I have one right here, or a pimple that's kind of, you know, sticking out from your face, the illuminator can bring that to light and make those areas catch the light. So to ensure that this doesn't, you know, emphasize anything we don't want it to emphasize, we're only gonna apply it on the high points of the face, or if you do have a little bit of texture on certain high points of the face, avoid those areas. So essentially, like kind of how we would highlight at the end of doing makeup, I'm gonna use RMS uh, Living Luminizer. And using my fingers, I'm just going to apply this only on the high points of my face until I get the intensity that I want. I'll put some right on the bridge of my nose. I'm gonna layer it on this cheek. I'm gonna put it on my chin, on all my cupid's bow. And the whole goal with this is to let this peek out from behind the foundation and then that way you either don't have to go in with any highlighter at all at the end or you'll have to go in with significantly less. But this will just make it look a little bit more realistic and natural. Now when you're choosing a full coverage foundation, I think it's also important to realize that uh, not all full coverage foundations are created equal. I find that there are some full coverage foundations that um, they are full coverage, but you have to use so much product to really get it there. And I find that those kind of negate the full coverageness because then it just looks very cakey and very heavy. So when I go for full coverage foundations, I wanna choose something that's really pigmented and really concentrated so that I can use as little product as possible and get you know maximum coverage with minimal product. So hands down, I think one of the best that I have ever tried is the Vanish Liquid from Hourglass. This stuff is so concentrated and so pigmented and the tiniest little bead of product can be stretched very far. So I'm gonna show you guys how I use this to get full coverage. I use the shade Warm Beige. And just to show you guys, let's start off with just that much product. Disperse it between your two fingers and you're gonna start dotting this 
all over your face. It's already giving me so much coverage and that was barely any product. Um, I'm gonna blend this out with my favorite foundation brush with the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Foundation Brush, which is my favorite. I think you guys will be uh, amazed at the amount of coverage that a foundation like this can give you. Just getting that one light layer that's going to even out your skin tone so that everything kind of starts at the same base level and then we can go in and pinpoint the areas of the face where you want more coverage. But just get one really thin layer of coverage so that everything is kind of starting off on the same page. First layer of coverage is done. Give the foundation a moment to set down before you go in with one more layer. And again, just the tiniest bead even smaller than we did last time. And we're gonna again, lightly apply this all over. But this is why I'm telling you guys, you don't wanna go in with too much. You do not need a full pump of this foundation. Uh, I feel like if you use a full pump at one time, you might be a little over coveraged for the first round. And I'm just blending in these little patting motions and swirling motions, but I'm not pushing the brush hard like this. You're just gonna, ruin all the hard work. When you're blending out foundations and stuff like this, you want to let the bristles of the brush do the work and you guys just do the movements so that it all gets blended out as naturally as possible. Now you guys can see, we're at that pretty full coverage stage right now. Just a little bit of the freckles are peeking through. Um, the pimples on my forehead are completely covered and most of that hyperpigmentation that I had earlier is completely covered as well. There's still a little bit of hyperpigmentation around my mouth just from previous acne breakouts. But I'm gonna show you how you can conceal those areas with this foundation. So I'm just gonna take, again, the tiniest little bead. Apply this wherever I have any lingering coloration that's peeking through that I just kind of want to disappear. Like right there, that's from a pimple. And we're not gonna be spreading this thin or far. We're using this as we would a concealer pretty much and only keeping it in targeted areas. And now we'll go in with concealer. I'm gonna use my personal favorite, NARS Radiant Creamy. I wear the shade Ginger. I just, I think that this concealer is one of the best ever. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just apply a few dots around your eye area where it's the darkest. And then use the heat of your fingers to blend this concealer in. The warmth of your fingers will keep the product warm and you'll have more time to blend it in than if you were using like a brush or something. And then if you notice that, like let's say you have a little bit of fingerprints that you wanna blend out, then you can go in with your brush. But I like to do fingertips first, then brush for uh, finishing blending, just like that. Now let's say you want a little bit more coverage under this eye area. I think one layer is great for just kind of brightening and waking up your eye area, but if you want to really conceal shadows or darkness, instead of completely engulfing your eye totally in concealer, be a little bit more strategic with where you place it. So I'll do two dots under the darkest part of my eye, just like this. Well, let's do three actually. And then again, use those warm fingertips to blend this in and really push it into the skin, not with you know an aggressive amount of pressure, but pat and push that in versus swiping it all around. Again, we can go in. And then again, we can go in for final blend with that little concealer brush. Setting the face is also a very crucial step because you wanna make sure you keep all this makeup in place, but you also don't want to overload your face with powder because I think that can also be a dead giveaway and really ruin a skin-like finish. So I'm gonna be setting with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. This one is in Radiant Light. And for the under eyes, I'm gonna use a really tiny concentrated brush like this. This is a Nabla Soft Crease Brush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of powder. I'm gonna tap off the excess and I'm gonna lightly, and I mean lightly, pat this under my eyes. Just to keep that concealer in place. 
and prevent it from, you know, creasing or moving around. And then I'm gonna use that same powder. The reason I really like this one is because it reflects back light and it doesn't look matte or too, you know, powdery. Um, so I'm gonna take a Wet n Wild P53 brush and what I'm gonna do is just lightly set the places of my face where I would be the most prone to makeup breaking down. So for me, that's the T-zone. And I'm doing a really light layer of powder. And then let's do a little bit on the center of the cheeks. If you want um, more powder, then what I would say is do one light layer, step back, assess the makeup, do you need more? If you don't need more, then skip out on it because over powdering will really kind of uh, age your skin and just, again, be a dead giveaway that you're wearing something full coverage. So just work in light layers and kind of assess, you know, where you actually need the powder. This is a trick that I think you can do that will really liven up your skin and get you looking like you're wearing less makeup. So this is a MAC Pro Longwear paint pot in the shade quite natural. It's a really nice brown. And I'm gonna use this to bring all of my moles back to life. Just so that it looks a little bit more natural. And it looks like I have some skin peeking out. I also saw a Mariah Leonard video where she showed this technique and I thought it was really great. So what you do is you take your finger and you draw little dots on your fingertip. Just get the product that you're using for your freckles like that. And then you just lightly tap it on your nose and you'll get freckles really fast and they'll be more sporadic and natural looking, which I really like. So I'll just put some freckles right in the center of my face. I think that always gives you a little bit more of a youthful appearance, makes things look a little bit less full coverage. For bronzer, I'm gonna use this uh, Natasha Denona bronzer and blush powder. And I'm just gonna chisel out my face with this. Bronze it up. You'll want to use a bronzer and blush when you're doing full coverage because they really are gonna help you get that life back to your skin. And when you do such full coverage makeup, it can kind of be, you know, slightly dulling on the complexion. So don't take bronzer and blush for granted when you're doing full coverage looks. I'm gonna take a little bit of blush and I really do feel like using something that's a little bit more luminous will give you a more youthful appearance and it'll just, again, take away from the full coverage look. Whereas I think if you use something that's more on the matte side, it can be, again, dulling. So I'm gonna use one of my favorites. It's Broken Luminoso from Milani. And I'm just using this same brush again. I'm gonna swirl this right on the apples of my cheeks. This blush has a lot of shimmer and it just gives you a little bit more of a youthful, juicy looking cheek versus something that's gonna be, you know, too matte. So I love how this just replicates a healthy glow. So to ensure that you take away any of the chalky appearance to the skin or any area that's looking a little bit overly matte, you can go in with a spritz. I would personally recommend something that doesn't have a pearlescence. So something in the family of MAC Fix Plus, Lila Bia Glow. I'm gonna be using the Caudalie Beauty Elixir today because I've really been liking this one. But anything that doesn't have a shimmer in the actual formula, just because if you use something with a shimmer, it can overly emphasize, again, texture that we tried to hide and things like that. So I'm just gonna do a light mist of the Caudalie Beauty Elixir, just all over. Make sure you get it everywhere. And then just give it a minute to dry and everything will go back to a little bit more of a softer finish and it'll just take away that powder look that we had going on. All right, so now that the mist has dried down, I can definitely tell a big difference, especially when I look up close in the mirror. Uh, it didn't disrupt my makeup, but it took away that 
you know when you can just tell that there's like a light layer of powder and nothing looks quite like skin? That's where the spritz really helps in just kind of ensuring that things look as natural as possible. So I really wanted to create this tutorial for you guys so that I could share with you some of my best tips and tricks and um, you guys can also use these tips and tricks and techniques to kind of customize this routine to fit your own specific needs. So I think one of the biggest things is, is choosing the correct primer. I really think that that Milk Hydro Grip Primer is so amazing because it's very versatile and it's just gonna help you get the stickiest base so that your makeup lasts as long as possible. And again, when choosing a foundation, something that has a lot of coverage and a lot of pigment in as little of the product as possible. So not using something that you have to use a ton of product to get that full coverage look because that's when you start going into the cakey territory, which nobody wants. Um, and again, choosing a concealer that has a lot of coverage and a little bit of product. Just and obviously you guys know I love bronzer, blush, and highlights, but they're actually very crucial products to this look because they bring back the life and just, you know, health to your complexion. Whereas when you're doing something full coverage, it can oftentimes look a little bit dull and one dimensional. So you really utilizing those products to bring life back to your face. So if you guys have any questions about this full coverage makeup routine, please be sure to leave them in the comments down below. I always do my best to get back to you guys and help you. I will list and link all the products in the description box down below. Um, other than that, you can just leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've tried any of these products or if you have any products that you think I would like to try. Uh, please leave the suggestions down below. Let's get chatting. And uh, please subscribe and come follow me on Instagram if you guys didn't earlier. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you found it helpful, guys. Uh, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye.